he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Voices from the Lord. Hello, I'm Carl Eastlack, and it's an honor to be able to join you as one of the Voices from the Loft for this devotional uh, for this week. I'm the district superintendent for the Wesleyan Church here in the northeastern part of the United States. And I bring you greetings from the other Wesleyan churches throughout our district. Uh, may God bless you as we spend these few moments together. I don't know if you have the same trouble that I've had. I've been raised in the church all my life. And uh, one of the one of the beliefs that I've had since I was a little boy is that prayer makes a difference, that prayer is the key, is probably the key to living daily in a successful manner uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ, incorporating his power and wisdom into my life. We need to pray. And yet at the same time, it's probably one of the most difficult things I've done is to try to establish a, a routine that stays true with me. I'm inconsistent at best. I don't know if that's you or not. I don't know if you're hindered in your in your prayer life. Does your mind wander when you try to pray? You know, 30 seconds into it, you're thinking about your schedule for the day or something else that is uh, that is on your mind. Your eyes maybe get heavy. <clears throat> well, you're in good company. You're not alone, not just with me, but I bet a lot of people that are listening today, many Christians seem to want improvement in their lives, especially in this area of prayer. And as we begin this new year together, uh, we reaffirm the importance of prayer, the key importance of prayer and the successful daily journeying of a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet it seems to be one of the most difficult uh, things that can be accomplished in our lives with regularity. John Wesley, who is the founder of the Methodist movement of which we're a part of that Methodist family as Wesleyans, uh, he, he saw that there were two primary obstacles in our prayer life. One is our own human nature, where we get easily distracted. Uh, we, we just say a quick few bullet kind of prayers, uh, but then we move on and we get into routine of just um, saying the same thing all the time and not really meaning it, but that we're, we're doing prayers rather than praying from the heart. Uh, and the second is our enemy. Our enemy, uh, Satan himself, does not want you to pray. So not only is it your own human nature that is that was broken from the Garden of Eden all the way up till now that resists, your enemy also tries to create stumbling blocks, things to mess with you so that you don't have time to pray and all of these kind of things. He said once in his journal, nature and the devil will always oppose private prayer, but it's worthwhile to break through. In fact, he says, that is a cross will not hinder it being a blessing. That it is a cross will not hinder that it's also a blessing. Let me say that one more time. That it is a cross to bear, praying consistently. It's also a blessing. Often the more reluctance, the greater the blessing. Boy, I found that to be true in my, in my own life. You need more joy, pray through. You need deliverance from temptation? Don't get off your knees until you've prayed through. Need a blessing? It's hiding behind that unprayed prayer, you know? Even though it's a cross to bear, difficult by your own human nature and the enemy outside that's trying to stop you, the blessing is found in the persevering with prayer. So I've asked myself, then what does that mean? I mean, how, how do I pray? Because I found myself when I enter into my time of prayer, okay, I'll set aside a time of day. That was hindrance number one, time of day, finally solve that issue. Then then I say, yeah, but uh, then what am I going to pray about? And, and that can become a, a barrier. So what I did, uh, I came up with a system. And for not everybody needs a system. Some of you just naturally converse, you know, and, and have a lot to talk about. I, I wasn't like that, and I suspect there are more than a few of you listening right now that could agree with me. And so for me, I took the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray in the Gospel of Luke uh, it, when he taught us to pray what we call now today the Lord's Prayer, or if you're from a, a Roman Catholic tradition, the Our Father, right? <clears throat> 
And it's beautiful. It's four, three, four, five, six, seven little pieces. And it helps me to make my time quality enough. And I broke it down to the seven pieces that help me quite a bit in consistently praying so I don't have to think twice about the structure of my prayer time. And then I know how to plug things in. So it begins with the word, our Father. And so I always stop right there before I move on from, from that word, our Father. Our Father. Okay, he's not just a the God of the world or the God of the universe and this almighty. And, and that's true. He is all of that. But Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father. Now that's relationship. I can relax in his presence. I'm not coming to just any God. I'm coming to the God who is also my father. I'm his child. I'm his son. And then it says, number two, holy is your name. And so I, I stop there. Hallowed be thy name. I stop there for a few moments and I reflect on that. Uh, in my real life, I reflect on the, the fact that he, he's not just my father. He is also holy God. And a holy God wants his followers to reflect his holiness in their life. And there are some struggles that I have with that. I have a daily fight to reflect God's holiness in my life, the way that I see people, the way that I see situations, the habits that I have. And so I pause a few moments and I sit for, with that just for a moment, say, Lord, is there something that we need to talk about here? So, Father, holy is your name. Now look at the next piece. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your will be done. Notice I haven't even asked for any personal requests right now. So far, I've just focused on who he is, my father. He's holy, and I want his will to be done. And I stop there just for a moment to make sure that, and I, I check my heart on this. Do I really believe that? Do I really want his will to be done? And then is when I get into the list that we all have. You know, I get into the list of things that are weighing on my heart and I ask him for things. And what I found is during that time that, uh, that I've broken down my list, if you will, into what I call prayer projects. That is that I mentally draw circles around a few very important things. I don't just rip off a ton of things, but each day I focus on one or two things and I draw a circle around that. And I say, Lord, I want your will to be done. I want you to be glorified in this. And if you want to use me in the process, I'm happy to do it. And, and it, it's maybe in dealing with situations or a physical need that I or someone has or a church related difficulty that's going on, uh, whatever it is, that's where I produce my list. <clears throat> and then I, uh, then I, the next section, uh, number five, is where he says in the prayer, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. This has to do with relationships. This has to realize that, God, you have forgiven me. And if there's anything we need to talk about here, let's stop and talk for a moment about it. And Lord, help me to forgive some other people that have wounded me in my life. Help me not to hold that same forgiveness back. So that's for relationships that I have. And I pause for a few moments. Lord, is there anything here? That we need to talk about between me and somebody else that you need to help me with. And then the sixth piece is the protection prayer. Deliver us from the evil one. Jesus said, deliver us from evil. And this is where I say, Lord, it's tough going out there. Sometimes I feel the onslaught of the enemy. I just pray that you would protect me and my loved ones, whether it's from physical illness, COVID-19, whatever it is, uh, uh, spiritual attacks, whatever it is, where I pause a few moments and talk about that. And then it finishes, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. This is where I say, I finish, Lord. I want you and all the things we just talked about to be glorified in all things. May the Lord bless you today with this truth from the Lord's Prayer and from the challenge that we receive to push through that while it's a cross to bear, and it is, prayer is not easy to do faithfully. It's a cross to bear, but that cross has great benefit and blessing to it too, if you pray through. Father, help us today to not only believe in theory about the importance of prayer, but to practice the presence of prayer in you and our lives. Help my brothers and sisters that 2021 is the breakthrough year for prayer. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of the week. Hope you're in church on Sunday for the Lord's Day. If not, to be able to watch it online or sit in your car uh, outside at the Loft Wesleyan Church, 121 South Branch Road in Hillsborough, New Jersey. God bless you, my friend. Voices from the Loft is a ministry of the Loft Wesleyan Church in Hillsborough, New Jersey. For more information about our church, please visit us at our website, www.theloftwc.org.